Or look at that. You're all fancy. All right. So welcome. I thought you had mentioned last week or the week before, Denise, that you were going to be doing something in addition, like before the tag me stuff today. Right. So today's lessons plan <laughs> is to okay. talk about the various urology subspecialty fellowships. Oh, okay. Somebody had asked about this um, actually quite some time ago. Um, so I um, did, I won't say a deep dive, but a semi deep dive into the websites for the various urology fellowships. Um, so I will say here in our institution, we manage an endo urology fellowship, a urologic oncology fellowship. So any of these other fellowships, I got information from the websites. And so if anybody has any additional information or I have put some wrong information, please correct me, just unmute and say, no, that's not right. Or, you know, my experience with a pediatric urology fellowship is such. But I thought we would just kind of walk through all of them so everybody has an idea of what is available to um, urology residents in the next stage of training and fellowships. Then we will review the ACGME common, reprogram require, common program requirements related to fellowships. So that will be the tag me study session portion. And then we can have questions, open discussion. All right, so our first one is the Endo Urology Fellowship, which is sponsored by the Endo Urology Society. It is not an ACGME accredited fellowship. Um, there are one and two year programs, which are focused on endourologic and laparoscopic and or robotic assisted surgery. So depending on what the resident is looking for, what they want their career to be, they would apply for these various fellowships, depending on what the institution offers. The recruitment timeline, um, December through mid-June is when they send applications and you do your um, interviews. The match occurs in mid-July. Um, we have a one-year program. We have one fellow per year. So every year we are kind of in the recruitment phase essentially from kind of December through mid-June. Um, we usually do our interviewing in May. So we just collect stuff from December to about March and then interview um, in May and then the match is in mid-July. Applicants register with the AUA, so similar to what our residents do. Um, there is an endourology application, so they don't use ARIS. Um, I personally do not like the application, but that's just me. Um, and then they send the application directly to the programs. You sometimes, as a coordinator or a manager, may be asked by your residents to send letters of recommendation to programs. I have done that for my residents as well, and I will get letters from other program coordinators um, sent on behalf of their docs um, in support of the resident. Um, yeah, I send out the letters too. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There are case research and publication requirements for the Endourology Fellowship. All right, Urologic Oncology. Um, so this fellowship is sponsored by the Society of Urologic Oncology. Again, not an ACGME accredited fellowship. Um, this fellowship is two years of training focused on advancing expertise in the multidisciplinary management of patients with urologic cancer. Uh, one year is dedicated to research and one year is dedicated to clinical training and they have pretty strict um, requirements as to how those years um, should be um, scheduled, et cetera. The recruitment timeline is November through mid-May and the match occurs in mid-June. Applicants register with the AUA and they utilize the SUO fellowship application. So again, not ARIS. This fellowship application, I find to be very useful. So I think um, maybe the Endo Fellowship needs to um, take uh, um, some notes from the SUO. And then again, 
same as with the endo uh, fellowship, the, the applicant will send stuff directly to the program or their coordinator if they're willing to do that for them. Programs are reviewed regularly, so kind of like our residency programs are, and recertification is every five years or as needed. So if there are issues with the program, your recertification may occur like sooner than the five-year time. The fellows and faculty take the OCAD exam at the same time as the ISE. So I have one of these fellows, and so every year the fellow has to be signed up for the OCAD exam, and a faculty member is supposed to take the exam. Um, you can have, it, the way it can be set up is, you know, you could have numerous residents that are training in one year, um, and then the next year you would again have another group of residents. So you're kind of like, you know, one year you have one group that starts and then one may start clinically and then the next year another one will start and then they would start clinically and the other one would go on to their research year. All right, pediatric urology. So this fellowship is a CGME accredited. Um, there is American Board of Urology subspecialty certification in pediatric urology. Um, so the, uh, the fellows that um, complete this will become board certified in urology and then will sit for pediatric urology boards. This is two years of training focused on diagnosis, management, and treatment of fetal, perinatal, childhood, preadolescent, and adolescent genital urinary and adrenal abnorm abnormalities and diseases. The recruitment timeline is November through mid-May and the match occurs in mid-June. So applicants register with the AUA. They utilize the universal application from the SPU website, so not ARIS. And those are sent directly to the, that is sent directly to the programs. Um, I've underlined and highlighted the fact that because this is ACGME accredited, there are program, re program coordinator FTE requirements. So 0.2 FTE program required program coordinator admin time is required. And then because it is ACGME, you would have all the various requirements similar to what we have for residency programs. Female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery, which we may have all seen, is going to have a new title come January. Um, and that is also an ACGME accredited fellowship. There is ABU subspecialty certification in FPMRS. Um, if any of you received your ABA news, ABU newsletter today, you might have seen that there were 18 uh, former fellows who sat for that exam. Um, there are also unaccredited fellowships as well. Um, so the way that this works is that it is a two-year fellowship for somebody who comes out of a urology residency program or a three-year fellowship for somebody who comes out of an OB-GYN residency. Um, and that training includes preventative, diagnostic, and therapeutic procedures necessary for the total care of the female patient, including complications and sequelae resulting from pelvic floor disorders. The recruitment timeline is December through mid-July and the match occurs in early August. Um, this does utilize, this fellowship <laughs> utilizes the NRMP match and ARIS. Um, and because again, it is an ACGME accredited program, there are FTE program coordinator requirements. We do have an FPMRS uh, fellowship here. It is housed in our OB-GYN department. Um, there has not yet been, it's a new fellowship, so they've only had three fellows that are all in training currently. Um, we have not had anybody from urology, so come out of the urology residency pipeline into that. They're all former OB-GYN residents, um, so they will be doing three years, and they spend um, a fair amount of time on the urology service with our FPMRS, soon to be called ERPS faculty. 
All right. Genital urinary reconstructive surgery, GERS. So this is sponsored by GERS. This is not ACGME accredited. Um, one to two years of training in reconstructive urology. The recruitment timeline, November through early June, match in late June. Applicants will register with the AUA and then send a CV and application materials directly to the program. So those are not um, ARIS utilizing fellowship programs either. And then lastly, I could not find a lot of information on this. Um, so I don't know even how many of these there are, but male infertility andrology. My PD um, did an andrology fellowship, um, but I couldn't find a ton of information. They're sponsored by the Society for the Study of Male Reproduction. One year of training focused on male reproductive and sexual health. Recruitment timeline, January through May, match in early June. Applicants register with the AUA and then send their CV and application materials directly to the program. Uh, Noi Eris meant not Eris. Um, so if anybody does have an andrology fellowship and wants to. Actually, we don't have one per se as in infertility andrology. Uh -huh. um, so we have one, um, a sex med one. Um, and that's mostly what's done. I mean, there is some infertility with it. And in fact, um, one of my infertility specialists um, said recently that they are going to join the fellowship match program. Um, but again, most of ours have been with um, sex med, you know, impotence and in mostly. Um, and that's through the Society of, can't think of the name now, the SMSNA, Society of Sexual Medicine North America. And if you look on their website, um, I don't really see any that um, list uh, infertility on it. Um, with the Society for the Male Reproduction, like you'll find um, down at Baylor, Larry right. Lipschutz Group yeah. and all of that. Yep. So you'll see those, and those are mostly infertility. It's not mm -hmm. specific infertility, not andrology, which would include, you know, sex med. Mm -hmm. At least what I could figure out, because I was like, asked, I was about to say to him, is our sex med fellow, is this still, is this going to be the same as the andrology fellow? What are we doing here? Because we get our funding for the sex med um, through, you know, getting a grant through the oh. Sex Med Society in order to pay for the fellow. So it can get a little complicated, as you said. And I think that we'll go on to this, but before we do it, I think that um, was kind of one of the reasons that somebody had asked about having this presentation is, you know, how do coordinators who are managing an ACGME accredited residency program also manage various fellowships. And it's hard. It, it was hard when I came in from a different specialty and it can be you know, equally hard here too, especially when you have the different timelines for recruitment. It can feel like you're, you're managing recruitment you're, you know, all year long, essentially. Um, so I, I think, my advice is you just have to have great organizational skills and just get into the groove as far as what the timeline is for each of the different, for your residency, for this fellowship and that fellowship. And then the more years that you do it, being in that groove is going to be easier, of course. All right. So we'll move on to uh, the study session, and we'll take a look at the common program requirements for fellowships. All right, so the fellowship program must evaluate workplace safety data and address the safety of fellows and faculty members, 
educate fellows and faculty regarding access to appropriate tools for self-screening, have a process for education of fellows and faculty regarding unprofessional behavior, all of the above or A and B. D. I say we're, D. We're saying D. I agree, D. I agree on D. So programs in partnership oh. with the sponsoring institution should have a process for education of fellows and faculty regarding unprofessional behavior. Wait. So it isn't it isn't <laughs> it isn't it isn't E A and it is not D, it is E. But no, that's just not what she said in her answer there. No. E is the answer. So here, here's the trick. The fellowship program must, but it should be reading should. Correct. Ah. You got it, Susan. Yeah. That's what gets you every time. Mm -hmm. Kills yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should. If it should, then we all know you have to. If you should, you have to. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Correct. It was but like a trick question. <laughs> it is a trick question. Exactly. And as we when we get toward the end of it, I know Tempest has taken the exam recently, so maybe we can talk a little bit, Tempest, about whether or not you thought there were trick questions like this, or if I'm just being mean. Yes, that would I thought there were trick questions. <laughs> and I, I even had to like look at what, what do you the search book. for this then? Like if you're doing control find or using your book, what do you look up exactly? To help you find this. This is where I get confused. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, I did not use the control find. And anybody else that wants to jump in, go right ahead. I would, as I I would recommend maybe like whichever answer you think may be best. Um, trying to pull like a word that's different from the other um, options. So okay. if you think A is best, then try to search for like maybe safety since it's not in the other option. Good point. Okay. That's why I was kind of like the quickest way to like get to, because I'm just kind of flipping through my book mm -hmm. and pretending like I'm pretend like taking it. And it's like overwhelming. Like if you go to the sponsoring institution section, but carry on. I'll, I'll, we'll ask more questions later. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right. You guys can unmute and, and ask questions as we go along here. All right. The program letter of agreement must list one faculty member accountable for that site, must be approved by the DIO, must be renewed at least every five years, A and B or all of the above. A and B. B, yeah. A and B. All right, so we're going with B. Correctamundo, the PLA must be renewed at least every 10 years. <clears throat> so I think this one is a little bit easier. And I think this one is probably more in keeping with what you'll see. All right. And there aren't true false questions, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so I tried not to put too many in here, but fellows should not serve in a supervisory role to junior fellows and residents. True false. or false? False. Yeah, false. Right. All right. Good job. And then that's, yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question. The maximum number of consecutive weeks of night float per year is eight. True or false? True. We don't do night float, so I have no idea. Well, I mean, now this is for fellows, though, and I don't know this. That true is for residents. I don't know for fellows. I could be wrong. But for residents, it's eight. I know because we got 
not didn't get in trouble, but we had a resident who. Stephanie is right and wrong because it's true for residency. It is true for residency, but it is false um, because, because I, I have to, sorry, I have to move all my stuff here. The maximum number of consecutive weeks of night float and maximum number of months of night float may be further specified for the review committee. Remember, these are common program requirements. I'm not even remembering why why I, this is not making sense to me. All right, we'll just go on to the next one, I'm sorry. Fellowships are required to have a process to evaluate each faculty member's performance as it relates to the educational program at least, which of these, quarterly, once per rotation, annually, semi-annually, never, these aren't residency programs. D. I think it's C. I'm saying D. I would say C, say C. at I'm least annually. Oh, well, that's right. It's at least so, yeah, annually. Oh. For subspecialties in which, this is hard. So for subspecialties in which the ABMS member board and or AO cert, AOA certifying board offers a biennial oral exam, in the preceding blank years, the program's aggregate pass rate of these taking the exam for the first time must be higher than the bottom blank percentile of programs in that subspecialty. I'm going to say E. First of all, can you tell me, was it annually for the last question? Yes, because it's at least. Yes, at least annually. Okay, okay, yep. okay. Sorry, just wanted to be sure. I have no idea about this. Yes, and we. I would say B. I see. Would oh, B. Oh, D. Six and five. No, that's not what I would have said. Six and fifth. Oh, six, not five, two. So this one is hard, but this one at least offers you a fair number of good words to search if you're using, right? Um, I don't think you'll see, you, you won't see questions like this, I don't think, and please somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but at least these kind of questions have a good number of words in them that I think are gonna be easier using the find function. All right, fellows are not required to be competent in communicating with team members in the handoff process. True or false? False. False. All right, they are required, correct. The required levels of supervision provided to fellows are, and these are all things we're probably uh, familiar with, E. e. Agreed. E. Is complimentary oversight even a thing, or is that just like for funsies? That was just for funsies. Oh, okay. I'm like, I don't <laughs> think job. you've ever heard of him before. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Fellows and faculty members must receive data on quality metrics and fill in the blank related to their patient populations. A. It's either B or C. Any, many, many, many. I say C. C. Yep, benchmarks. And again, this one has you know, a few fairly good things that you could uh, control find. Sorry. To the following are true in regard to the CCC. Faculty from other programs can be members. Residents from the core specialty can be members. The PD must appoint members. It must include six members at a minimum, A, B, and C, or A and C. F. F. 
one for F, are we? Sure enough. Yep, presidents can't be members, and there must be at least three faculty members. I always liked the questions where there were numbers because I thought, again, that was the thing that my eye would just go to on a page when I was in the section that I was looking at. So it was like, okay, six, and then you would look and say, oh, no, it's three. Mm -hmm. All right, only residency programs have to report board certification status annually for the cohort of board eligible fellows that graduated seven years earlier in ADS, true or false? False. False. Fellowships have to do that too. And of course here, like going back to the first section of our talk, we're talking about ACGME accredited fellowships. All right, programs must use multiple eva evaluators, which can include professional staff members, peers, patients, the fellow themselves, faculty members, all of the above. Yes. All of the above. Good job. Thank you, Denise. You're welcome. Sure. The program coordinator must be provided with a blank and a blank adequate for admin of the program based on D. Size. It's oh, absolutely D. <laughs> <laughs> fact, a. I have it to you. Thank you very missing much. Missing extra PTO in there. A. <laughs> a. A. Yep. Sadly. Yep. But I love the pumpkin with the tiara, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is very cute. Very fitting. Fellowship programs may assign fellows to engage in the independent practice of their core specialty during their fellowship program. If programs permit their fellows to utilize the independent practice option, it must not exceed a blank percent of their time per week or blank weeks of an academic year. Oof. So another hard one. The program yes, I'll see you Yes, D. I'm gonna just guess. I'm guessing C. I'm gonna say B. All right, so we got a B, a C, and a D. Uh B. I just found it. You found it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Twenty percent of their time, no more than ten weeks in an academic year. Good job. All right, which of the following must be used as tools to ensure fellows are able to engage in autonomous practice upon completion of the program? Daily avails, subspecialty specific milestones, number of publications, subspecialty specific case log, and C, B, and D. B and D. F. B and D. B and D. B D is F. So the milestone. I'm having nightmares from the pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, that's a little creepy, Denise. <laughs> Fun to look for that stuff, though. The curriculum must contain the following educational components progressive responsibility for patient management, an introduction to public health, program aims consistent with the sponsoring institution's mission competency-based goals and objectives for each educational experience, all but B and all or all of the above. I say E. E. Yeah, all but B. Good job. You guys were quick on that one. Nice job. <clears throat> all right. The program must obtain verification of previous blank and a summative competency-based performance evaluation prior to acceptance of a transferring fellow and milestone evaluations upon matriculation. Scholarly e. activity. What are we saying? Sorry. D. I say D. I say D. I say 
Sorry. <laughs> oh, educate. Oh, we have to verify that they finished med school and all that good stuff. Well, um, they finished their residency too. Must obtain verification of education. An ACGME accredited fellowship program may accept an exceptionally qualified international graduate applicant who does not satisfy the eligibility requirements, but who does meet all of the following additional qualifications and conditions. We talked about this in our GME meeting this morning, actually. I'm going to say E. I'll say E. Yeah, E. Good job. The program evaluation committee must evaluate the program's threats, strengths, missions, and aims, areas for improvement, all of the above. All of the above. E. All of the above. Good job. Program director must document verification of education for all fellows within blank of completion of or e. departure from the program. D. E. D. E. 30 days. E. Good job. All right. How drastically do the common program requirements different differ between residency and fellowship? They really don't. Not yeah, they really much. don't. <laughs> I guess I guess you're right. I didn't even have anything there. That's gonna be me after tag me. <laughs> I should have put in many more slides because I think it always goes much faster than I think it's going to go. Um, but I am gonna stop sharing if everybody's okay with that, and then we can chat. All right. So questions, concerns, questions of um, the group that's here that has recently taken the exam. Can you send us this PowerPoint? Yes, and I will also put this um, on um, YouTube recording of this, but yeah, I will send you the PowerPoint. So Tempest, I heard that you passed. Yes, um, oh, I recently, <laughs> thank you. I recently passed in September. Yes. Yay. Thank Good you. Good for you. Well that was the hardest done. Test That's fabulous. Done. Yes. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Are there any questions I can answer for anyone on the call today? Did you think that a lot, some of these questions were on the test? I took the test and I didn't pass it. So I'm getting ready to take it again. But I have to tell you the truth. I can't remember one question on the test. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it, it was so stressful. It was. So um, I do find attending these um, Tag Me study group sessions very helpful. Um, and what I noted to um, some other coordinators is when I'm on these tag me, ses uh, tag me sessions, I'll like pull out a post-it note and like any notes or anything that like really sticks out to me, like, oh, that's helpful. I think that may be on the exam. I'll like make a note on this post-it note and like stick it directly inside of my tag me study guide. Um, I did find that helpful because some of those questions were, um, some of these questions are on the exam at times. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Um, I was talking to somebody that took the test. Um, she basically said that all the questions that were on um, were based on specialty. I, and I haven't been doing the specialty. Like I've been studying only for like the, um, obviously there's a lot of pro uh, common program requirements, but I run three programs. Do I have to? I think I asked it and somebody said that um, they took the test or they haven't taken the test. I just wanted to see, do I need to be studying for my, what I handle like the ob dine? Okay, thank you. She said that I enjoyed and I was like, what? She's like, yeah, you have to study. I'm like, but I have three departments. So it's it's only the common program requirements that they focus on. Okay, perfect. You and then focus they, on, uh, you focus on what they provide you. 
Okay. So that whole that whole um, study guide that they provide you, you can. Uh, that's what I've been that. using. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she said you have. And to that's all the general. They're the they're the core yeah, requirements for everyone. So nothing specialty. <laughs> Only right. the core. The core. Okay, perfect. And then you guys are going over fellowship stuff. Is fellowship? Um, will there be fellowship questions on there? Yes. Okay. Uh, fellowship. Yes. Um, the fellowship program requirements. There are questions. On the exam. I think. Okay. I think the scenario parts were kind of a little bit difficult because you really couldn't find them in the when you went to find. But do you remember what some of those scenarios were? If this happened or if this resident did this, then I just, I thought there were some of those too. Yeah, I don't remember a lot of scenario questions and I could have just forgotten because it's, <laughs> it's a lot of information. The exam is pretty long, but um, I don't remember a lot of um, like scenario questions. Um, one thing that I did find helpful to navigate my time is um, I definitely relied on my binder. So if what I would do is I would pull up the question, the question will appear on the screen and it'll say, okay, this question is answered from the fellowship section. So once I go to my fellowship question uh, section, I'll then look using the control find function to like find the answer or I'm sorry, the page number that the answer is on and then go back to my binder to find the answer to the question. Because um, what I told some other coordinators as well is I use like a highlight highlighting technique. So like all dates are maybe highlighted in pink and then all program responsibilities are highlighted in green. So if the program coordinator or program director or DIO, anything that lists like someone's responsibility, that's highlighted in green in my binder and any date or any number in the binder is highlighted in pink. So that actually helped me like really like manage my time during the exam. I do, I can actually show an example if I could share my screen, Denise, mm -hmm. of yeah. like what my binder looks like. Yeah, do you have access to it? Otherwise I'll make you call. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Um, let's see. So could you- I did highlight portions of my binder too. Not in different colors. I like your color coded ideas, but- I did highlight certain things. So if you can see my screen right now, and this is what my binder would look like. So anything that was not like information that like really jumped out at me that wasn't pertaining to a date or a number or someone's responsibility was highlighted in yellow. However, everything else, like the others were highlighted in green or pink. Um, so that was very helpful um, as well. Uh, what else do I have here? I'll just like, to quickly go through oh so this is actually an example as well so all numbers any content associated with a number date hours weeks etc was pink anything additional was yellow and then responsibilities were all in green cool. um and then this here um is an example of what my binder looked like had um I made like little sub tabs right here, which I found helpful as well, because if I'm in like the uh, fellowship requirements and they're asking about like something about the PD or PD responsibilities, <clears throat> I could quickly navigate to that section right there rather than trying to scan throughout my entire book. Wait, am I, did I miss something? Is this an open book test? Yes. Oh my God. And I love your, I love your printout, by the way. You could sell that book. I know. <laughs> With the tabs already inserted in them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can you send um, us this Power present, PowerPoint presentation? Yes, absolutely. I'll send it to Denise and I'll let her share it because I don't think I have everyone's um, email address. Yeah. And you. I know some people wonder why I attend like these sessions. So um, I attend them just to stay up to date with the ACGME guidelines, but I also attend them because um, these sessions also provide like C CME credits as well. And so when you do become TAGME uh, certified, you do have to keep up with your CME credits and um, your presentations that you're giving. 
and I can show you um, after this what like the document that I use to keep track of all of my credit. Um, and then like what I have here is like how many questions are on the exam. So um, hold on one second. So on the initial exam, there are 175 questions and you must answer 140 of them correct to pass. Um, so what I did, what I found helpful was like, I know that the exam allows you to like flag questions for you to return to. So if there were any questions that I had to return to and I had additional time, um, I went through each question. However, I tried to make sure I didn't exceed that 35 question limit of uh, questions that I had flagged because or else I knew like, oh, I may not pass if I have more than 35 questions that I'm unsure of. So I had to try, I tried to answer as many correctly as possible. And then this is here for the retake. If you have to do the retake, there are 125 questions and you must answer 100 questions correct to pass. And I did the same thing, made sure I didn't exceed the 25 questions incorrect or flag questions. Um, and then this here, um, which will be included in the presentation, these are the um, material, uh, study material items that I use for my study guide. Um, so these were the tabs that I purchased, the post-it note. Um, I found this extremely helpful the binder dividers, because then you can quickly, I know some people use post-it notes for each section, but I found the um, insertable pocket folders helpful because I can then, since with them being hard, I can really like quickly navigate to each section. So if they say, okay, these questions are for the residency requirements, and then they may jump to like the self-study, I can quickly jump from section to section. And then definitely um, the highlighters with various uh, colors. I found extremely helpful. So you so, and Tempest were allowed to use both the electronic version and the your binder? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, nice. I could. Yes, I could. Yeah, I was only allowed to use one or the other yeah. and I used my binder. Yeah, me too. It oh. changed every year. <laughs> <laughs> and then this here is, uh, hold on a second, I can... Uh, and then this here is the um, the document that I created to keep track of um, how many CME credits that I have. Um, and then I just put here like the date. And this is pretty much the information that they're going to request. And then each tag me stu uh, study group that I attend, who presented, and then how many credits I received from each. And I do receive uh, save those certificates that Denise provides as well in our emails just in case they were to ask for them. I do make sure I keep those. I and then- I have a question in regards to this, if, if, I'm, if it's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the CME, I mean, the credit that we're getting, we, we did submit some of it on our application. Will they ask for details of this? Like how you have it? I'm not sure since this is my first time taking the exam, I haven't done like, um, like my research. Denise oh, may okay. be able to answer that question. Yeah, I think all you had to do was fill out the form when you were applying for the exam. You didn't have to provide, like, you didn't have to upload certificates or any of that. You just provided, if I remember correctly, just like the name of whatever it was that you did and the date. Yeah, I literally did. Before? Yeah, I literally did only that. And I, I kind of had to just go back on my calendar and, and yeah. fill it out that yeah. way. Yep. Yeah. Um, which is hard. But I don't, I, I was like, this is very detailed. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have this. <laughs> but it's a good, it's a good tool to keep moving forward because you're right. You should be keeping the, what is it called? Um, uh, what's it called? The portfolio with all your accolades and whatnot. Yeah. Thank you for this. Yeah. I just have a, on my uh, computer, I just have a folder called tag me. And in that folder, I have a folder that just is like, CME or CE or whatever I want to call it and like Tempest does I just keep track of everything keep my certificates if I get them in there I think the certificate thing I can't take credit for it um one of the prior professional development um chairs came up with that and I think that is an awesome thing that that this group um offers so Oh, 
So Tempest, what would you say was the most challenging section? Or for section? Me, yes, uh, for me, the clear path leads uh, was the most challenging section, which I feel like I still can't wrap my head around that section. Um, there weren't many questions in that section. I want to say maybe 10 at most, I believe. Um, but I'm sure each exam will vary person to person. But um, yes, the clear pathways were definitely very challenging because I guess they list them as like HQ or PQ. So I just couldn't really wrap my, my head around it. And I didn't spend much time on it. I just moved on to the next section. <laughs> gotcha. And I see there's a question in the chat as well um, from Jenny. She says she's a new coordinator. How long does she have to need to be a coordinator to get TAGME certified? So you have to be um, a coordinator or work within GME for at least two consecutive years to sit for your TAGME certification. Do you feel that this information in the study guide is going to change much within now and two years? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No, I, I agree with Terry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, think about it in the way that, uh, think about, depending how long you've been in GME, how often program requirements change or common program requirements change every couple of years, maybe. So though, like those portions will only change if the common program requirements change, you know, if the ACGME revises them. Okay, thank you. And uh, one thing um, that I was unaware of until I think the week that I was scheduled to take my exam, I thought that I could use a dual monitor. So they do not allow dual monitors during the exam. So just make sure you have a single screen monitor. Um, I did have, I did use my MacBook for the exam. Um, I think there were a few, a few additional steps I had to take to make sure that my uh, computer was compatible with the uProctor um, portion. Um, but again, it walks you through those steps pretty easily. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and one other thing that I was hoping, I thought that because if you look at your tag me, um, like the reference guide the, to prepare you for the exam, the screenshot that it shows, it appears as if the question will appear on one side of your screen and then your uh, electronic version of your study, study guide will be on the other side. However, if I went to use my electronic version, it covered the question completely. So I had to keep opening and closing the study guide to make sure I was looking up the correct answer to the correct question. So well, just be aware of that as well. That's unfortunate. I thought it was side by side, but it wasn't for me. And I did find that if you um, control find on some of the answers, then it would kind of go back to the question because the questions, a lot of the questions, you couldn't copy paste in there. It wouldn't come out. So I tried doing some of the answers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll be very honest too with this group because I actually mentioned this in another Tag Me ses uh, session. I did not pass the first time I took the exam. So please do not be discouraged if you do not pass. Um, I actually failed by six questions. I was six questions short from passing. Um, I did take the exam uh, about a week and a half after I failed and for me, I noticed that a lot of the questions were the same. And of course we had less questions and of course less time to take the exam, but I felt like the second time was definitely easier. And I finished in about two and a half hours during, the, during my retake. Well, thank you for that. Yes. Uh, uh, consolation, because it's really very degrading. It's really upsetting to spend all that time in studying and everything and really work hard. And so I appreciate you giving me the encouragement. Absolutely. Again. And I do see in the chat as well from Robin, are there any other sessions for Tag Me uh, scheduled? Uh, so like, is, are you referring to Tag Me study group sessions? Yes. Robin, right. oh, okay. 
Yes. So um, I'm actually a part of another study group, um, PAGME study group. It's NSAMA PAGME study group. Say um, that again. It's uh, NSAMA PAGME study group. And I'm happy to forward that to you. I think I may have found it on the GME Facebook page that um, they offer a study group session as well. Um, I can forward you, if I receive your email, I can forward you that meet and invite. And I think those are held weekly on Thursdays. Yep, each week on um, Thursdays are the study I would love that session. too, if, if it's okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. I know in the real estate world, they have a program that's called CompuCram. And it's for different types of tests that... Um, you take over and over and over to, and, you know, to see that you're getting better. Is there anything like that online for this? I would doubt it. Yeah. I Not that we doubt. found, no. <clears throat> There's like one Quizlet that I found that has a few questions in it, but I it don't. It didn't help me at all, Quizlet. Yeah. Not very helpful. Okay. That's Thank all you. I found. I, I did not have any additional tag me sessions scheduled for it here. Um, I think because I think it's twofold. I think I thought we were probably close to everybody have, having taken the exam. Because what, what do we have? Like you have up until December something to take it. Is that correct? Right. I think okay. it's December 16th. It's like okay. mid-December. And because... You know, for urology, at least, we will be coming up on the day when we have to send out our invites and start planning for recruitment and all that. That is said, if somebody would like something additional or would just like a small group of us to get together, I'd be more than happy to plan something. Well, and they can go back. There's a lot of Tag Me study groups on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they could go watch those. Yeah. And that's actually how I found this study group because my specialty is actually emergency medicine. However, I actually found Denise's videos on YouTube and I like researched, like looked her up and I reached out to her and asked if I can join her study groups. So this was, these study groups were extremely helpful and very beneficial. Absolutely. Thank you, Denise. You're very yes. welcome. It's not just me. It's, it's our whole village here that... <laughs> that helps out our Acure Village. And I think this is so great that, you know, so many of us from different specialties are getting together. And this just proves that like these professional development sessions are so vital for all of us, whether it's studying for TAGME or just kind of discussing common program requirements or whatever. Um, even, even when we don't have things that are necessarily, you know, specialty specific that are common, we have a whole lot of common things, right? So. Right. All right. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? When do you take your exam, Cody? Tuesday. Good luck. You'll yeah. Let Good us luck. know how you do. You'll well, now I like Tempest little highlighting things. I'm going to be doing that all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> You go, girl. You could do it. Yes. Good I luck, just, Cody. I'm a horrible test taker. That's just my thing. Like, you can ask me verbally, but like on a test, I just get anxiety and I black out. So, this is why I'm not taking it. And I'm nervous because, you know, I'm pregnant. So, I'm just nervous about my bathroom breaks and going over Aww. time. So, yeah. I like I said, <laughs> the highlight and technique definitely helped me manage my time. Yeah, that's really creative. And I started tabbing, tabbing like like you said, the notes, like things that like like I would answer and get wrong on that I thought were right. Um, but um, yeah, the way you did it was makes more sense to like really find it. And I like your idea of doing the control find and then going to your book. That's yes, will be yes, beneficial. It was definitely harder trying to just use the electronic version because everything is in black and white. So like you're looking at all of these words, whereas using your book where you have like, oh, this is a number, it's highlighted in pink. 
you can quickly go to that number and find the correct answer. That's cool. Well, thank you. Thank Plus you. with well, one monitor, it's not so easy to go back and forth. I was always afraid that I was going to lose the page or something, disconnect something. Yes. I actually had three different proctors during my test and each time I had to redo and show them all the videos and everything. And it was very distracting. It was not, it was very stressful. Oh, wow. Yes. So those proctors are tough. Let me tell you, they don't give you a, I mean, if they, if you're looking at your book, even in looking down, they'll say, I can't see your head, pop yes, your head up again, true. Yep. you know, so they're very, very uh, strict. And I had one, pro I had a proctor that didn't speak very good English. So I but kept right. asking her to repeat. <laughs> but that's Jesus. right. You're right. I did too. And I had to cover my laptop with a towel and I had to cover my other monitor, even though it was disconnected with a towel. And it, I had to take my monitor out of the room, the second monitor. I wow. couldn't take mine out. It's, if you're it's on, on, how can you show them that you, your room? I mean, I have a computer right now where the, where the I camera to, is attached I, to the computer. No, I had to lift it. I had to no, lift it and move I it. I can't. It's, no. it's connected you know what I had to, to my desk. You, you know what I had to, to do? I had to do a video. I had to do a video with my phone showing the room and then play okay, the that I could do. back <laughs> in the camera. That might have been easier, but I actually had to. <laughs> That's what I had to do. That was the absolute worst part of this exam for me, was exactly what you guys are talking about. I was a wreck, lifting up my monitor, and now my monitor's like attached, like you said, Susan, so I couldn't even do it, but lifting up my monitor and trying to get it under my desk, I was an absolute wreck after that. <laughs> and so that made the test feel a lot like, like, oh, the test, oh, that's great. The test is great. <laughs> That's and if you're, if you're planning on taking the exam at your um, institute, make sure that um, you run a system check and like walk, go, walk through the system with your IT department, because although your computer may pass the system check, there is, I think it's called you proctor that, and that's like the chat where you can chat with the proctor. You have to make sure that's not blocked from your institute because that was blocked for me. So I did pass the system check but you proctor was blo blocked from my institution. So I had to take the exam at home instead. I, I, yeah, could, I had I my IT blocked. do that, come in I and check blocked. everything. Mm -hmm. And no headsets are allowed neither. You, um, so make sure you have a computer that has a microphone and work. So they'll ask to check your ears and they'll ask to check your wrist, no watches. <laughs> yes. And can you have a bottle of water? It just can't have a label on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it has to be clear. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't make know sure you have a, your driver's license. <laughs> Which is funny okay. because you can't have a purse, right? Or a wallet, but you have to have your driver's license. <laughs> mm hmm. Yes. You have to have a place to put all of your stuff. And you have to move everything, everything off your desk. Not yeah. one thing can be on your desk. Mm -hmm. And they'll ask you, desk. you can use like your cell phone or a mirror just so that they can see the reflection of your computer screen. And then like, if you're using your cell phone, um, you'll, they'll then tell you, okay, now put your cell phone away and your ID. And then you'll then have to show them where you stored your cell phone and ID to make sure it's not on your desk. And if you have like a bulletin board or anything around your desk area that has papers on it, you have to take all that off too. And look at Terry mm -hmm. has that bulletin board. That would that's a lot you'd have to take down. That's behind mm -hmm. you. <laughs> you should see would, what's plastered around my computer. I have nothing but sticky notes. <laughs> it it would all have to come down, Susan. Reason number five hundred and ten why I'm not taking the test. <laughs> If I do it again, I'm going to take just my laptop and I probably still will take a paper thing just because that makes me feel better and go to like my local library where I know the Wi-Fi is going to be sound pretty much and that the walls will be probably bare 
you know, I can get in a room where there's nothing but me and the table and the laptop. And I do see that there's another question in the chat. When you were signing up for a date, was there a good amount of options or is it only offered a few times a month? There were plenty of options because even when I took the retake, I took it about a week uh, from me uh, fell in the first time and I still had plenty of options to select a date. And they had all kinds of different times too. So if you wanted to take it during the day or you could even take it late at night, there was lots of availability. I think when I looked, I think you could even take it like on Thanksgiving day or something. I mean, it was crazy the dates that were available. Yeah, I tried to sign up for my retake. I think it was labor day but it was they didn't have any dates listed so i think i had to take it the next day but again i'll share my email with um denise and if anyone has any questions uh feel free to send me an email and i'll have to meet one-on-one -on -one or we can do like a small like tag me session together i'm happy to do so you should definitely teach some tempest <laughs> you are awesome <laughs> this it's is just awesome like, thank you so much thank you it's just little things that I found helpful that I'm always happy to share thank you you're welcome yes, thank you very much mm -hmm. all right everyone have a great day um have a great weekend be nice if everybody could start it early right hopefully you can thank you thank so you Yep. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, Cody. Yep. Good luck. Good luck, good luck Cody. Cody. <laughs> yes. Okay, bye, thank you. Bye. Bye, bye. Have a good one. You too.